Hey, it's Guillermo Mate here. Thank you so much for coming out to this webinar. Let me get myself settled here because I'm all over the place today. Can you do me a favor? Uh, if you could hear me loud and clear, so if you could hear me loud and clear, go ahead and put ones in the chat box. That would be really appreciated here. Let's me know that you could hear me. <laughs> all right, so Eric, Chuck, Sterling, Sean, Michael, D, Lachey, welcome. I appreciate you all coming to this webinar. It is Sunday and this is live. It's about 1.55 um, p.m. Eastern time. Um, we have a lot of people here today. So if you could do me the favor in the chat, just go ahead and let me know where you're located. We're gonna get started in about five minutes. I'm just waiting for um, everyone to just kind of you know come in. Um, people usually arrive late and you know, they get locked out and, you know, I can't do anything about that. So, um, so we have Las Vegas, Las Vegas. I've been to Las Vegas, uh, multiple times and, uh, it's fun. It's cool. Georgia. What's up, Georgia, North Carolina, North Carolina. I've been down to Raleigh, North Carolina. It's beautiful out there, man. Nothing but vegetation. It's lovely. Dallas. I lived in Dallas. So, um, Dallas is just hot. <laughs> Hot. Arizona, what's up? Arizona, Canada. Canada, I've never been to Canada. It's crazy. Never been to Canada. Baltimore, I've been to Baltimore before. Omaha, Nebraska, what's up? Ohio, South Dakota. Man, like, it's crazy, right? With everything that's going on, you guys made the time to, to come here and just, just be on this call. And, you know, this is what it's about, you know? Um, that's what separates us from a lot of the people, you know, today. You know, there's a lot of people even in, within my community that just do a lot of talk and they talk a lot till they eventually just never do anything, you know, but you guys are here and you guys, you know, are the action takers and that's what it's about, you know, creating the time to, to you could, so that you can essentially move your business forward. So um, we got about two minutes or so. I'm just going to allow everyone to settle in. So as you're coming in, go ahead and just, if you could hear me, drop those ones in the chat box. Let me know where you're located. I see that we have China here as well. It's amazing. What's up, China? What time is it in China right now? That's crazy. Um, more Canada. What's up, Canada? Great. Uh, let's see here. Ireland. Ireland. Portugal, what's up? I've been to Portugal before. Portugal is beautiful, man. I actually, you know, I went there on a business trip. I just wish I had more time to, you know, really explore the scene. It's really, really like ancient times. I don't even know how to explain it. It was just crazy over there. Different experience, but uh, but yeah. Um, so I'm gonna get, you know, the show on the road. We got about, let's see here. We got about, you know, a couple of minutes to go. And um, you guys should be able to see my screen on your side. So if you can see my, if you can see my screen, go ahead and just drop those ones in the chat box. You should be able to see my browser on your side. It would suck that I'm here talking and then like nobody can see my screen. So if you can see my screen on your side, go ahead and put those ones in the chat box. Great. So Lee, Rob, Jennifer. Great, great. So everybody can see my screen nice and clear. I promise, like, this is all the yapping I'm going to do throughout this presentation. You know, really what you're going to discover today is a brand new piece of technology that we poured a lot of energy into. Uh, and it revolves around geofencing. You know, geofencing is a type of technology that, you know, the truth is, you know, not a lot of people know about even to this day. And, um, you know, there's a lot of networks out there that claim they do geofencing like Google, Facebook, which I'll cover today. But really what they allow you to do is geo target. And that's very different from geofencing. And you're going to learn more about that today. We're going to be here for some time. So um, do me the favor, you know, get settled in, shut down any Facebook, shut down any like uh, browsers that you got going on if the little ones are running around the house just tell them hey go to the other side of the house <laughs> you know and and just get settled in this is going to be fun and um, also i ask that you leave your questions for the end of the webinar it's a bit complex for me to just stop in between and and just you know answer the questions so just make sure you hold those questions or write them down on a notepad that will really help me out i really want to answer your questions and i i want to make sure that i don't you know, miss out on anyone on this presentation. So 
Um, it's about 159 now. I'm gonna remove myself now out of the screen. I promise to bring myself back toward the end of the uh, end of the webinar. And like I mentioned, you know, this presentation is live. It's now 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. I'm going to uh, just expand my screen here. Uh, and in a moment, you'll be able to see just a full screen on your side. So if you can see a full screen on your side, just go ahead and just drop those ones in the chat box. You should be able to see my ginormous face with some big letters and stuff on your side. Great, David, um, Jennifer, Alan. Great, you all can see my screen. I appreciate you helping me out. So with that being said, let me just... Uh, Get out of here and get the show on the road. So as you know, my name is Guillermo Mata. I'm the CEO of Red Tour Media LLC. Um, today you're going to discover, you know, how to run hyper local, you know, geofencing ads on digital TV, audio, and mobile devices. Quite honestly, I've never, you know, we've never built anything of this magnitude. Um, I'm just so proud of my team, and I can't take all the credit for this. So. Um, I want to shout out, uh, you know, my developer Asan and his and his entire team, um, and our new tech specialist Wally Shah. I mean, to, to be completely honest, guys, I can't take no credit for anything. I'm, I'm, you're going to see today. You know, I'm just like the brains behind it, but really, these are the guys that are making this possible. We're talking day and night work. Um, families, they have families, I have a family, and we're just working hard every day. And, you know, this is what transpired at the end of the day. That's all the bragging you're going to hear from me today. But, uh, you know, I operate a digital agency and community with over 20,000, 20,000 digital consultants. We focus on expanding our businesses through the process of business development and technology. Uh, my 10 years of marketing experience has enabled us as a digital company to help more marketers business owners, startups hassle less and generate more sales worldwide. Um, I'm just gonna bring the chat back up here really quick if I can. And um, you all can hear me loud and clear. You all can see my screen. Great, 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 perfect. So I'm just gonna bring my screen back and we could get the ball rolling. Okay, so let me just narrow this down here. Working with GoToWebinar is always interesting, but here we go. <laughs> All right, so digital devices can be tracked. I'm not sure if you know that, but they can. 90% uh, of mobile devices have GPS turned on. And uh, I didn't even know that. You know, I've had my phone for a long time now and I didn't even know that. But if you go down into your settings in your phone and you go into personal, if you're on an Android and you go down to location, you could turn your location on and off. And so this is huge because it allows you know, marketers like me to be able to track those devices in particular areas and run advertisements exclusively to those devices. Um, I'm going to break this all down, but uh, here's what CNBC had to say in, in, in that regard. Um, they posted an article that I found quite interesting, how GPS can track you even when you turn it off. Yes, even completely off. So, and they're referring to, you know, devices in general. So here's some key points I wanted to share that I found really interesting. A Northwestern University, a group of researchers recently found a way to track people with cell phones uh, with GPS capabilities turned off. Another highlight here, people don't really realize that their mobile phone with access to all these sensors is in some sense potentially like the best spying device you can imagine. Um, one researcher told CNBC, which is huge, man. It just shows you, you know, where technology is in these current times, whether you have a laptop, you're at a lounge somewhere, you're working from a laptop, you're walking at the mall, you're at a, you know, Super Bowl event, or you're at a, you know, you're in movie theaters, your device can be tracked. And that's just, just crazy to me. Um, you all can hear me, right? You all still with me? If I could get those ones in the chat box, I just want to make sure um if you can see my screen yes 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 okay great 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 i'm just gonna bring my screen back but yeah like i found that really crazy and i uh, wanted to go ahead and share that with you guys uh bear with me one little second go to webinars uh getting funky on me all right great so mobile devices aren't the only trackable devices and this includes digital tv um you know tvs nowadays like tcl uh, 
and so many others um, have built in Roku and they allow us to run ads to those devices. So when someone pops in the TV, they, they go down to maybe Crackle, which is a free application. Um, we could run ads within those apps, which is insane because usually, you know, those click rates are really high. Like usually what people do is um, they'll pause their TV and then they'll go to their phone. I mean, I'm guilty of that. I do that myself. I've seen deals on the TV where I'm like, whoa, that's actually a really good deal. Let me go to my phone. And what happens there is that that drums up impressions, that drums up clicks and, and so much more. People don't realize that, but you know, that's just a fact. Digital media players, audio and vehicles, that's another, you know, I've, I've done this. Um, I've, you know, there's apps that you could run on your phone that, um, you know, you could publish to your vehicle and, you know, you're targeted based off, you know, the fact that you're in your vehicle you're driving using this particular app like you know, Spotify or something like that, you know? So you can be tracked, laptops as well, desktops. Being able to cherry pick these devices with you know, the correct tech makes the process easy, like super, super easy. That's the beauty about geofencing with the right type of technology. Without the right tools, you are left with no option but geo-targeting. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Marketers have a tendency of running campaigns, no prior research, they buy data, spend up to a year analyzing data, later spending on what they truly need to boost campaigns, which is backwards. I've seen this, I've seen, uh, I've been around a lot of people in the industry, big time marketers, I've witnessed this, I've seen it with my own eyes, and I've done it myself. You know, I used to spend thousands of dollars on campaigns, <coughs> excuse me, on campaigns, and then I will go back to my Google account, have to analyze everything. And I just didn't have enough control. So it would make things difficult. It just meant we had to spend more and then sit back and, you know, track those conversions, track those impressions, track those clicks and, you know, just sum it up in, in, in a box and, you know, you know, just go on from there. So, which always takes me back to Google. You guys know that I have a good time talking about Google. Look. I don't want to get into any issues here, but you know, this is not to downplay Google, but platforms such as Google don't allow you to target precise locations. They only allow within one mile radius. That flat out makes geotargeting with them far too complex and extremely expensive if not set up correctly. I want you guys to check this out for a minute. Someone on Google support forum um, asked the question pertaining to just radius itself. So you can see the question here. This was uh, posted on 2619. So you guys don't think I'm just like, you know, I just kind of made this up, but this wasn't too long ago. And this still happens to this day. But you can see here, this is the minimum distance for geo targeting by radius. Yeah. So, so somebody want to know, somebody wants to know what is the minimum uh, distance, you know, for targeting radius by radius. Here's what Google's product expert had to say. This is like an actual product expert. And, you know, they came here and they said, well, assuming that your question is about desktop, the answer would be it depends on your geographical location. Generally speaking, the more advanced the telecom infrastructure is, the more the accurate the geotargeting would be. Look, man, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Look at those thumbs down, right? You see all those thumbs down? Look, he's just doing his, his you know, he has some information, some intel on Google. But look, look at those thumbs down. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. No. Sorry, Google, but that's not geo fencing. That's geo targeting. So you notice all the thumbs downs, nothing but complexities, right? You in short end up geo targeting, which basically means you only get to target a certain area within one mile, which essentially isn't isn't as good because it just creates spillovers and it's not accurate. If you want to like target a specific area you should be given that control but you know because they are built as more of a corporate type business they make it a bit hard for you know that's why they're in the stock market today that's why they make things complex because this is part of their you know how they bring in revenue they make it tough and we've we've noted that you know you know and i honestly i've, I've dealt with you know all types of businesses in the space and let me tell you i don't like that i don't i don't like that type of model that just didn't sit too well with us so we have to you know keep push forward so so what ends up happening is that you spend more and later hassle over cookies metrics and you know retargeting which is 
very, very complex. So in short, that's just way too much. Need I say anything else in regards to Google? So have you been able to successfully geotarget or geofence with Google Ads? So if you could let me know in the chat if you've been able to like successfully geotarget with Google Ads, uh, just go ahead and put yes or no, yes or no, so I know where you guys are. Um, obviously, no, 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 no. Gary Crenshaw says no. So if you've been able to, you know, okay, Garland Brown says no. Eric Williams says no. Absolutely, and I'm with you guys because uh, I've been down that road just being complete, completely transparent with you. Um, so just as I anticipated, the answer is no. So this is this isn't to downplay Google, but to share with you what I found on my end in a way that is transparent and clear. Let's take a look at Facebook. You know, that's usually another avenue that a lot of our guys run to, including me, right? Um, this is an article that I had to share with you, caught my attention, the complete always updated guide to Facebook advertising, which was posted by Kevin Lee, VP of marketing at Buffer, which is almost hilarious because there's no surprise here. These guys are always, always changing like terms and conditions or they're making something difficult because they got to go, you know, based off what investors are saying. And it's just, you know, Mark Zuckerberg doesn't have that control he once had. That's just, that's a fact. So, well, isn't it true? I think we all can agree. These corporate giants like to switch it up a lot, making the geotargeting process far too complex. Likely to run into bidding issues and over deliveries. I've been there. I've done that. I've had guys even click on my ads, like on some vicious stuff. I, you know, it's just crazy. I've seen some crazy stuff in the space. So very common in general uh, ad outlets, which leads me to say that Facebook also doesn't allow anything less than one mile. You normally need to turn off all other areas on your do not show list. Let's take a look. So here is uh, Facebook. You guys are familiar with this interface, right? Take a look at this. You see how far out? I'm just going to use this little pointer here. So you see this? This is not good. This is not geofencing, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. This is not geofencing. This is geotargeting, and it's not accurate. Even if you put an address in there, no, that's that's not what you want. So targeting locations within one mile radius would make targeting according to our exact needs far too complex, causing way too many spillovers with zero accuracy. I'm all about accuracy, and I don't like the fact that, you know, these companies do this type of stuff. Like, this is just not good. I don't know. So the result, max budget, that happened to me a bunch of times with Google, with Facebook. I've, you know, I've set up campaigns, and I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars I've seen some crazy stuff, folks. It's just, it gets crazy out there when you don't know what you're doing. So here's a look at Google Google's ad map. All right, you guys are familiar with this, right? So you usually, you know, this is part of the ad creation process. You would go ahead and put your address and then you would, you know, just select one mile and that's as low as you can go. And there you go. But this is not, again, this is, this is geotargeting. This is nothing in regards to geofencing. So when geofencing, we require full control. This means no limits on how we can zero in on very specific locations. We need it all, longitude, latitude, coordinates, pin locations, parking lots, venues, period. We need full control. General, General Alice just wasn't cut it in for us. So we went to the drawing board and not only got up close and personal to the exact location we wanted to run ads to, but you know, after a few calls, we ended up uh, teaming up with a, a programmatic advertising giant, which you'll meet at the end of this presentation. They're based out of New York City. Um, these guys are also part of the reason why geofencing app was even possible. Um, but let's keep pushing forward before I get all over the place. So for this portion of the presentation, we'll go over what geofencing actually is, and we'll dive in depth into that and the technicalities behind it. And again, if you have questions, you could hold it for the end. I'll be answering questions toward the end of the webinar. So geofencing is a location-based service which an app or other softwares use GPS, RFID, Wi-Fi, or cellular data to trigger a pre-programmed action. When a mobile device or RF 
FID tag enters or exits a virtual boundary set up around geographical location known as a geofence. Not just tracking because there's a lot of guys out there saying, yeah, we do geofencing and really all they're doing is offline conversion tracking, which I'll talk about a little later. Uh, I wanted to add as well that there's barely any competition in the space. I mean, if you go on Google and you type in geofence, there's nothing out there. Companies are promoting that they do geofencing, but actually all they're doing is tracking offline conversions using Google. They don't have a way of running your ads on just about any DSP, including 350,000 audience segments and digital TV and audio. And I have facts to prove what I'm saying, so you guys don't think I'm bluffing here. So this is what makes our technology advanced but suitable for anyone looking to tap in, tap in or professional in the scene. Check out the screenshot based on our research meetings, and uh, you know we've met up with a bunch of people out there, and uh, this is what we came about. Consultants, listen closely. Okay, so if you go to Google, just like I mentioned, you'll see here that there's not a whole lot of competition out there. There's probably like five big guys out there, but they're not connected to DSPs. Once again, they're manually doing a lot of this work. So we reached out to one company because I like to talk with facts, and this is what he had to say. We track offline conversions. I was curious. I wanted to know a little bit about how they were going about it, and this is what they came back with. We track offline conversions. So if you don't know what that is, Google Offline Conversion Tracking is a tool that allows businesses, and you could take this all down. Hopefully, you're taking notes of all of this. Um, Google Offline Conversion Tracking is a tool that allows businesses to import conversions that are tracked in any other system. For example, the company CRM into Google's ads, giving the advertiser the ability to understand the quality of their leads according to the volume, sales generated, so on and so forth. This right here, guys, offline conversion tracking is not a walk in the park. It's very complex and it requires a lot of technical work. This is another response that we got from that same company where they said, but we do this individually for our respective clients, which I respected fine. Look, they're probably doing really well off of it, not taking anything away from them. All I'm just simply sharing here is that it's a fact that there's companies out there doing this manually. You see what I'm saying? So hopefully that's clear. So geofencing in these times is in demand, especially with COVID hitting a lot of businesses. Man, it's sad, man, because, you know, you know I'm in the space. I'm in the space, you know, 1,000%. I'm all in, in this space. And, you know, to see a lot of businesses out there struggling, this is like the perfect opportunity for our folks in our community to go out and not go out there like you used to do back in the days, you know, prior to COVID and you start selling and stuff like that, but really truly try to help a business because the reality is, is that they want to stay open and, you know, these are the times. So, so take a look at what service providers are charging for geofencing services. So this is one company here. I brought them up in the past, but they also offer geofencing. And so they claim and they charge anywhere between five grand and 10 grand per campaign. Okay, I want you to just like really think about that. That's $5,000 per campaign. That's like you going to Google and then every time you create a campaign, that's five grand. I know a couple of people that'll be willing to pay that, but it's usually folks that are like either lazy or just don't have no time for anything. So they just pay it, which is crazy. For that, you just charge that. So this is another company here. They, you know, they put you, you know, face to face with their consultants and enormous hidden fees. Um, another company here, same thing. They want you to consult with their reps. They try to vet you and, you know, they ask you a bunch of questions and it's just, it's just too much. So you would be at a huge advantage point here for the simple fact that they don't have access to our DSP and technology. I know I keep bragging about this, but you're going to see what I'm talking about in a couple of minutes and just a few a little later. So companies are scaling out the outlets I previously shared to be a bit clear on geofencing. Geofencing is using GPS, again, and RFID to define a geographical boundary, then placing a digital advertisement in the mobile apps of the consumers within a virtual fence. And not just, you know, within the apps as well. I'm talking TV um sites uh and and you know so many other avenues uh this uh, practice is compatible with all free location where and mobile apps and like i mentioned tv um so 
Today's GPS and our, uh, the technologies are highly advanced and able to ping signals off satellites, ground stations, and receivers within milliseconds, which is super quick. These signals then are accurately able to identify the exact locations of the technological devices. I know it sounds like a lot of technical mess, but trust me, by the end of this, it makes sense. But if you don't know what RFID is, is basically short for radio frequency identification, which is uh, short for, you know, the use of electric and magnetic fields to automatically identify and track tags, attach the objects, and in short, this is basically the process of the RFID, which is ran through radio transponders and radio receivers and transmitters. I'm just giving you the technical stuff behind it. You know, this is really just, I'm just trying to educate you here. Hopefully you understand. Let's keep moving forward. So that's pretty cool, right? So for this portion of the presentation, we'll go over what a geofence ad looks like visually. So in, in regards to having the correct tools, when it comes to geofencing on our platform, we give you a plethora of different options, such as in-car audio, digital TV, and digital banners. But generally, gen geofencing advertisements consist of customized banner ads that are eye-catching, clickable, and easy, mo easily mobile responsive. So let's take a look at some real examples so I'm not just sitting here yapping. So I wanted to highlight these ads for a few different reasons. Number one, I love bold letters. I love seeing bold letters in ads, which usually just pops out. You could take those little notes. You notice anything about these advertisements? They're all to the right, right? That's because, you know, most Americans are right-handed, you know? So usually anything off to the right or in the center is usually going to get you a good click. Um, I love what Gobble did down at this bottom ad here where they said, Gobble, the new way to cook for the modern family. And then they got to get $50 off now. And then they got the Brandon off to the side. They got a little dish on the side. That's going to make me click. So just think about what is going to make your potential prospect get that clicker going, that, that index finger clicking, you know? And then, you know, PPC management consultants here, Falcon Digital, shout out to them. They did a good job here. That's great. Free audit. I wouldn't use free audit, but, you know, no cost is ideal. You know, anything around that ballpark sounds ideal. Um, this is another one here. Um, Hitachi did a good job. See how Hitachi is a global brand and, you know, they just got to throw up a logo and a huge button that says see how and they're going to get that click. I don't like the fact that it's off to the left. But, you know, it'd be nice to see that to the right. Windows Pro did a good job. Everything is to the right. They got the content down the center. And then this bottom ad here, Lick by Liquid Web, four keys to generate seven-figure sales on WooCommerce. Get the ebook. Boom. I love it. Then it's like a happy guy there. That's really cool. So here's another one here, Alliant International University. Button is down in the middle. Brand to the side. Perfect. And then you got Amazon here, which they, they always do an incredible job. You know, I usually keep an eye on this stuff. I love to see what other companies are doing. You know, you could always learn from, uh, you know, what other folks are doing out there. You know, it's all about keeping that day one state of mind so you could keep growing and keep learning. But, you know, so we have some context here, you know, in, in all, like, this is what your ad should look like. Uh, call rail here, again, button to the right, 14-day tr uh, trial phone tracking, recording, and analytics. Then you have a jewelry company, button is to the right, very minimal, go to meeting, very minimal, straight to the point. You know, a lot of people like to clutter their ads. That's why I'm showcasing this and hopefully it's making sense. Um, this is another example here of a geofencing ad where you can see here opening soon. This is a, uh, uh, you know, a car wash. You can see it here and um, they got a, those long banners and then they got those square uh, banners as well uh, which are perfect for mobile and just look great overall it's just straight to the point opening soon eureka learn more boom done that's it free car wash visit us that's it bold letters huge uh this is a you know just a basic spotify local dealership ad spotify runs ads within their app so yeah, this is just an example of a dealership. So speaking of Spotify, quick pause really quick, but uh, they have 248 million active users, 141 million ad supported monthly, uh, active users, 50 million, over 50 million songs, over 3 billion playlists, 
500k podcast titles, 70 uh, available in 79 markets. These guys are crushing it, man. So people are listening out there, and if they're listening, chances are is that they'll go to their phones, go to the laptops, and you know run that search. It depends on who you're targeting, right? Because geofencing isn't about just all right. I'm gonna geofence, you know, Tony's Pizza, and you know I'm just gonna run ads. That's not that's not geofencing. Geofence is a bit more in depth, and it's it, there's a there's a bit more of a process, and I'll break that down a little later. So, but so to stick back to Spotify ads, 248 million active users. Um, of those, 141 million users receive ads. 51% of Spotify audience comes from mobile devices, meaning that listeners can be at home, on the go, um, giving more opportunity to reach your target audience when it matters the most. Seven out of 10 Spotify users have positive reviews, positive views on businesses who advertise on Spotify. Uh, there are plenty of times where we aren't in front of our screens, especially when listening to music. So Spotify can get your message across in these key times when someone isn't in front of the device. Okay, so hopefully that's all clear there. You could also do your demographic targeting. I'm talking about Spotify right now, just so we have some context. That's, you know, Spotify is a part of our platform as well. We have, we're connected to their exchange, which is incredible. So you don't have to go run to them and do all of this. So here's an example of what, you know, I like to see when I think about, you know, just Roku ads, especially during the holidays. We're coming up on Black Friday soon. We're coming up on the holidays and this is just that time. So big, bold letters, big, bold banners. If we're talking 50 percent off, make it nice and big, make it look good. You know, so Roku stats coming a little later. So in order to see any ads Someone physically needs to enter the geofence, which is why it's extremely important that your fence is exactly where you want it to be accurately. So here's a visual you know, example. As I mentioned earlier, this is not geofencing, but this is more like geotargeting, you know, which is a bit further out. You're going one mile out. Accuracy looks like this. Okay, this is geofencing. You're able to get up close and personal and you could target any specific area within a facility, which is insane. Yes, within a particular facility. Retargeting and conversion tracking is essential in all of this. This way you can track your potential buyer, you know, when they have entered a conversion zone. This is what clients want. Nonstop flow of sales and conversions. So you don't need to know where the individuals live now since you have basically picked them up where you wanted them. So you've basically cherry picked them and now you could follow them wherever they go because you have that data. Now, whenever you enable your campaigns on our end, you'll be able to show your ads anywhere they go so you can promote your client. That's how it's done when you have the right type of technology that can support it. Let's talk about the clients that will benefit from geofencing. Know all of this down. It doesn't, you know, just know everything I'm saying down. If you got to take screenshots, fine. All businesses can benefit from the power of geofencing. It helps build brand awareness locally and has the power to generate revenue potentially with quick turnaround times. With that being said, high-frequency businesses who generate substantial food traffic, food traffic or online traffic are typically the best fits for geofencing. Here's a couple of industries you may want to take a look at. Please note all of this down. Food and beverage, okay? Like your restaurants, you know, everybody's eating outside nowadays, unfortunately, due to this whole mess. But, you know, that's just what it is, you know? So audio and aftermarket, that's a big industry as well. Uh, legal, the legal space is always busy 24 seven. Okay. Lawyers are competing against each other, believe it or not. Yes, they do. They compete retail as well. Like your small mom and pop shop entertainment. Can you imagine this? Take a look at this picture. Imagine being able to geofence this entire event. We have folks right now doing this. They're doing this right now. And I'm going to show you toward the end of the webinar. So you guys don't think that I'm just talking here. Watch this. So political campaigns as well. 
um, a lot of these individuals, like guys that are in the political space, they usually run off to those giant companies. You know, they pay the 5K, the 10K, but you could offer a solution that's a bit more reasonable, you know? That's way more reasonable than $5,000 per campaign, which is crazy. For this segment of this presentation, we'll take a deep dive into geofencing and geotargeting facts you can apply on any of your campaigns. Analyzing campaign. When you've analyzed your campaign data, taken uh, the geofence route, you may find that certain locations are more desirable than others. And that is a fact, you know, um, you may geofence, you know, one area, and then like the other area, it's just it's too low volume. And you know, it's, it's tough to explain, but you know, when I show you in the platform, you'll see what I mean. But to continue on here, you can tailor your future bidding for ads to bid higher on the best spots. And of course, share with potential clients. So way more insight overall. Using location data, you can bid lower on the less desirable location to keep a broad reach while saving money on your campaign, which is huge. Geofencing also works when users exit parameters as well. The user's phone ID is stored for up to 100 plus days at which point will be stored in your retargeting folder. Until that time is reached, they will still be able to see the same ad from your geolocation they were previously in. So they're gonna be like, whoa, what the? I was just there, what? How did that happen? <laughs> so personalizing your ad experience. You could speak to users in context of their current location, which is ideal for geofencing. You don't wanna be targeting a location, talking about something that's off topic. You might want, for example, run an ad telling the potential clients that you are scheduling walk-ins, consultations at your office. That location is a few blocks away from the hotel they're staying at. Another feature of this technology is timing your ads to show on specific times of the day. You might, for example, want to run your ad um, that shows only when someone gets off work for the day and goes to run his or her errands. Overall, geofencing campaigns can be set up in a specific neighborhood or even location on a smaller scale like universities, stadiums, and, and lots more. It's, you could really go far with it. A geotargeting campaign could, instead of you know, targeting everyone who enters a neighborhood, target a specific demographic of people that live within that neighborhood, okay? So you could target people based on demographics, income, age, you know? So for those of you working with clients, prior to doing any type of marketing, I'm certain you did your due diligence, such as your demographics, your age, your location. With geofencing, you still need to understand your vertical like 1,000%, 100%. You know, it doesn't matter where you go, whether you go to Facebook, you go to Google, you need to make sure you do your due diligence, okay? Very important. Regardless to, and I, you know what, and I, I remind myself this all the time, you know, because it's very easy to get ahead of yourself and stuff, but, you know, you have to do your due diligence. Regardless to what platform you use, you still need to be clear on the people you're targeting. The, the main components for me that stand out is age, gender, location, interest, and of course your offer. Make sure that, you know, these are all locked in. As long as you got these locked in, you'll have enough data to be able to scale. So for example, if I'm geofencing a dealership, I'm not just going to show my ads to anyone. The mailman has zero interest in buying a car. He could be searching for something completely different. Like, you know, I don't know, like CBD shops or something like that. I don't know, you know? So you want to make sure that it's spot on target. You want to show your ads only to those interested in buying a new car, but at a rate that's reasonable and affordable and competes. And this is in relations to those of you, you know, that are working with dealerships. Normally you would have to run to Google, you know, the search engine to get all of your data, you know, like as far as like, you know, the types of people you want to target and all that stuff. But we have that all set up for you inside of our platform. So for this segment, we'll go over a few geofencing case studies uh, provided by our, our partner, and I just wanted to go ahead and share those with you. Okay, so questions, questions. Here is your strategy, you know, and and you know the reality is, is your strategy strong enough? So look, check this out. 
Auto Dealer Improves CPA Through Dynamic Remarketing Efforts. So check out. The goal was to drive user sign up, right, for a test drive. Channel. The channels that they used was dynamic display remarketing, showing each user the exact car they browse on their devices, remarketing, reaching users, browsing their website. They improved their conversions by up to 35%. The dealership saw much better results than their last remarketing partner. The overall cost, oh, excuse me, I got caught in mouth. One little second. That's what happens when you do these webinar, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cotton mouth. So the overall cost per site visit was down 23% for the legitimate traffic and the cost per conversion went uh, down 35%. A dynamic solution like this generates tens of thousands of dollars in savings in the long-term run. So the CBD brand here, uh, the CBD brand drives conversions by geo-targeting specific locations. The goal here is to drive website traffic and attributable post click conversions the channel was you know display remarketing prospecting on approved websites and apps targeting optimizing to highest performing websites and zip codes driving efficient cost per landing page visit and quality site traffic that led to conversions so in short 0.87 87 so 87 cents was exactly what they paid per visitor which when you compare that to nowadays like Google and Facebook where they're charging like $10 per conversion, $20 and more. It's just crazy. So I would tech optimize toward the higher CTR and the lowest cost per website visitor. In doing so, the platform got web, the website visits down to 87 cents. By the end of the third month, one algorithmic prospecting drove awareness and helped find, um, find top performing sites while remarketing was the most successful strategy for driving conversions this is another one here matches company drives awareness for holiday promotions so the goal was to drive mattress sales and vcr over 85 percent channel full episodes on ott ctv which i'll talk about a little later um they had a 30 second spot which you can do on our platform you could run those ads you know on tv just like i mentioned um, for the targeting, only all the following apps, they ran it on Discovery, Food Networks, HGTV, and News, okay? So you could specifically choose those channels. So um, for the DMAs, they chose Chicago, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Columbus, Cleveland, and you know they saw a 9% increase on top of the funnel. So through strong delivery across CTV apps, uh, which is like your Roku and stuff like that, the campaign was able to increase brand awareness by reaching users across TV, watching devices of choice. Reporting included completion rate of 98%, which is insane, and a lift in sales across the DMAs, which you know saw the, the CTV ads. There was a 9% increase on organic site traffic compared to areas that did not have CTV. So they did really well. So you get results like this when you have the correct technology to back you up in the process. Wouldn't you want to give your clients exactly what they want? I would hope so. A nonstop flow of leads and traffic. Let's take a look at a couple of niche specific geofencing examples. So retail, retail store. You could create a simple geofence around its physical location so that when mobile device users pass through the geofence, a notification is essentially, you know, just put out to them. So a car dealership, right? A car dealership could set up a geofence targeting people who are leaving a competitor's dealership. Normally parking lots, lounges, the dealership could make them a special offer such as 0% financing to encourage them to a potential alternative. So for those of you working with dealerships, pay close attention. So concert venue, a concert venue could use geofencing to deliver information to attendees at an even or an even or encourage users to use a branded filter while attending the concert restaurant examples restaurants can use geofencing to show ads to people interested in italian food simply by setting uh setting on the main avenues where there is a, uh, plenty of walk-in traffic here is how you make the most out of your geofencing. You understand your customer, that's very important. 
target competitors location, be relevant, prompt immediate action, and be transparent. Let's not forget traffic exchanges. Geofencing becomes extremely powerful when connected to the correct traffic exchanges. We found a way to make that possible. Take a good, a good close list at this. You guys see these names here? Just take a moment and look at, at this screen for a moment. Those are all the exchanges that we're connected to. This is just a back-end screenshot from the programmatic side of things, but this is these are all the exchanges we're connected to. So if an individual is interested in the World Wrestling Federation, we have a, a source for that. If someone is watching the Dallas Morning News, we have a source for that as well. If they're searching on LinkedIn, maybe they're going off to Zillow. We have sources for that, DraftKings, USA Today, Match.com, Wayfair, CBS, huge. Nobody has done it like this. This is what I'm saying, like nobody. And most importantly, you know, the supply type. We have access to all of these supply types, web, mobile, mobile and app, connected TV, Android, Apple iOS, Apple Mac, Microsoft Windows. Let's dig deeper into the importance of understanding your clients, customers, et cetera. That's only a glimpse on you know, what is to come shortly. Understanding who your customers are and where they spend their time can have a powerful impact on the effectiveness of your campaign. For example, you could set up geofences around location, locations you know that your ideal customer spends time targeting competitors' location. Geofencing competitors, uh, with the correct technology is flat out next level, but you have to do it correctly. You may want to start by creating geofences around your competitors' businesses, such as other similar restaurants or stores. This will allow you to formulate ads that express special discounts when they have already been going to your competitors' location. Great way to win a sale over the competitor, uh, you know, competitors when service is just too low. Being relevant is key. In general, you want to set up geofences within five within a five minute radius from the location you want customers to visit. During the slow time of the day, however, you may want to increase this to attract a larger audience. You could offer special limited time discounts throughout the day to draw in customers during off peak hours. Prompt immediate action. The message that you are sending potential customers should be clear, concise, and prompt them to take immediate action. That will be you know, best for you know, just to drive conversions, whether it be clicks, impressions, or you know, sales. And most importantly, be transparent. Uh, it's important to let users know how you're using their information. Many mobile users are open to receive special offers and discounts from local businesses, but they do want to maintain their privacy to the um, to just to be able to opt out essentially is what I'm saying here. Okay. So for this segment of this presentation, we're getting closer. Believe me, we're getting closer to the, you know, big release. So bear with me for this segment of this presentation. We'll take a look at the five rules for the road. Geofencing is not limited only to mobile devices. As I mentioned earlier, geofencing can be done just as effectively or sometimes more effectively via desktop tablets. For instance, there may not be enough to scale uh, to do a mobile geofencing campaign as people aren't on their phones all the time. Uh, another situation where mobile geofencing is not ideal is when, you know, when a search starts on a desktop, car shopping comes into mind with a real to location nearby as the next logical stop in purchase. To do geofencing on mobile, the user must be within their apps or a mobile web browsing session. Making calls, checking email or text messaging don't allow for the right environment on the phone for targeted ads to be served. Within a regular retail environment, only a small portion of all people might be doing one of these needed actions, leading to scalability issues. A user must be able to look at their phones if a phone is in a pocket or purse, it's not being used. There is no opportunity to reach that user, even if they were, you know, are in that exact spot you're targeting. Think about what type of action you are asking them to do and the situation that the user might be in. 
Geofencing can often be highly effective in situations where the person is walking or primarily stationary, as they'll have the opportunity to safely engage with their phone. Geofencing doesn't work well when a user is likely in their car as they are not likely to be within their app while driving. At least we hope they aren't you know, driving and using their apps, which is crazy. But sometimes it happens. Sometimes people pull over and stuff like that. So think about the geofence boundary. Are we talking about a very defined area uh, with clear boundaries or a cluttered area uh, where one geofence zone might blend into an adjacent geofence zone? If it's the latter, geofencing may not be the right approach to take. Geofencing can be highly effective, highly effective digital marketing tool, but only when executed correctly. Hopefully, this has given you a checklist of items to consider in your next geofencing campaign. So for this portion, we're going to go over OTT CTV ads. So one might ask, what in the world, Guillermo, what is OTT CTV? OTT refers to over the top, a term used to refer to content providers that distribute streaming media as a standalone product directly uh, to viewers okay, over the internet. This bypasses telecommunications, multi-channel television, and broadcast television platforms that traditionally act as a controller or distributor of such content. This term is synonymous to subscription-based video on-demand services, Hulu, Netflix, SkyGo, HBO Go, etc. OTT services are accessed via websites, on personal computers, apps, or mobile devices. CTV, connected TV, is also similar to OTT because it is a TV connected to a device with internet capabilities, such as a set-to-top box or OTT device, smart TVs, gaming consoles, Apple TV, Google, Chromecast are examples of these devices. So you've seen these devices before, right? You know what a Roku device is. They sell them at Walmart. They're at Amazon. They're everywhere. Okay. Um, Quick little educational background on Roku, 43 million active users, 14.6 billion streaming hours, 54% of Roku users are cordless. As long as they're running those searches and stuff like that, you'll be able to target them. Here's a visual difference between OTT and CTV. Connected devices, just so you see it here. You got your Roku, Chromecast, Xbox, Android TV, then over the top, Netflix, you got your PlayStation, Hulu, HBO, ESPN, Comedy Central. So you could stream your ads within these apps, okay? So CTV versus OTT for marketers breaking things down. A significant difference between CTV and OTT really starts to reveal themselves as you venture in your campaigns. Over the top advertising, for example, are usually shown before, during, or even after watching a particular piece of content. It's similar to the experience that you get when you load a video to watch on YouTube. Before your selected video plays, you're usually greeted with a short advertisement that can be skipped after five seconds. But in this case, you know, with us, we allow 30 seconds. You may see another ad somewhere during the content itself, and there might even be another one at the end. Connected TV advertising is similar but also different in a number of ways. CTV ads can play on the devices themselves, thus giving savvy marketers the ability uh, to reach out and connect with members on their targeted device, regardless to where or what content that user is watching. The prime benefit of connected TV over OTT video advertising is audience quality, okay? They are the most engaged and vested audience among all over the top media and mostly view content using paid subscriptions. With CTV advertising, you can hand pick the publishers you wanna target from private marketplaces, which we allow on our side, and display your ads alongside premium content to the most popular TV shows and movies. Ads can appear not only on Roku device, but also on hardware options like PlayStation, Chromecast, Android, and Xbox, as I mentioned. 
This is what Twitter has to say about all of this. CTV marketing allows brands to take advantage of not only particular personas, but characteristics like age, gender, income levels, household properties, intent information, and more. So here you got it here, over the top. Remember, over the top, content stream over the internet to connected device. Got it all here. Then connected TV, CTV, a television set that is um, connected to the internet via OTT device or has a built-in internet compatibility. So it's just like built-in. So either or, whether it be on the device or it's on the TV, you'll be able to run those ads. So here's a visual ad example for CTV. Not the best visuals, but you know, usually they're big, bold. Um, I, in the training inside the platform, I'll go over this. So um, you could even collect information as well if you want to, if you know, if you have, you know, the ability to get a good, uh, you know, video editor in, involved in the process. So lots of activity. Something that I had to share with you is that 40% of OTT users have paused their content to purchase or learn more online, which is crazy. Like 40%, I'll take that any day. That means that like people are actually watching these movies, they're indulging, and then it's like, boom, there's your ad. And it's like, wait a minute, that's actually what I'm looking for. Let me pause, let me go to my phone. It's cool. So here's just a, like a percentage breakdown. I just wanted to go ahead and share this with you. You can see here, um, uh, as far as like watch time, you can see that the watch time is pretty huge. 30 second ads, they're up there, man. They're up there, you know? So this is why, you know, video ads are not to be uh, slept on when it comes to, you know, TV. Here you got, uh, you know, as far as like devices, which one is really rocking it right now? And Roku is clearly crushing it. And then you got right behind it, Fire TV. Um, then right behind that, Apple TV, you got Xbox. So lots and lots of uh, avenues for you to scale. So you got Smart TV, Roku at 44.2%, Connected Game Consoles, 34.8%. Amazon Fire TV, 33.1%. So this is good stuff. Ads show only to those receptive. Remember, keep that in mind. So whether you're targeting individuals that are Caucasian, Hispanic, light, TV viewer, married, we give you all of this control. So we have come to the end of the presentation. We're not done yet. Um, I know you're excited, so let's keep it pushing forward. So are you ready to start geofencing? Get ready because in a, just a couple of seconds, you are going to discover a new innovative piece of technology that will enable you to run geofencing ads on a completely different level. So let's get the ball rolling. I'd like to introduce to you uh, our Red Toy Media members because you guys are the only ones that know about this. Geofencing app, Hyperlocal TV, and uh, digital ads. Geofencing app is a new innovative technology built exclusively for businesses, marketers on all levels, beyond just proximities. With the Howard technology, not only do you get up close and personal with your location, uh, you're looking to target, but you also have full control over your campaigns with zero restrictions. You have access to 350,000 audience segments, making your campaign set up process a breeze with the ability to access traffic sources from the following networks. NBC Universal Media, World Wrestling Entertainment, White Pages, The Weather Network Canada, The Weather Channel, AOL, Marketplaces, Glassdoor, Dallas Morning News, Verizon Media, Applications, and tons more. Our technology is focused around hyper-local targeting with flexibility so you can target colleges, stadiums, events, exact locations using our mapping system, latitude, longitude, pin locations, and more. We put a lot of emphasis into our interface so you have a delightful experience with easy workflow geofencing app algorithms hyper local targeting custom and detailed reporting so you can always go back and elect to target sources that work best for you so ready to start geofencing meet the team behind it as i promised to you toward the end of the webinar i would be introducing to you the actual team that made this possible for us Keith Guberman, CEO of the Programmatic uh, Mechanics, 
and uh, Paul Rozowski. Shout out to all these guys, man. I can't take credit for them. They're out in New York, my hometown. And Eric Thorson. Shout out to Eric Thorson, man. He is the guy that said, you know what, Red Toy Media, I love what you guys are doing. We're going to help you guys. So shout out to them. COVID virtual hug. <laughs> so virtual uh, features overview. So let's review the features really quick. So geofencing app campaigns, you have the ability to do your, you know, precision targeting is what geofencing is all about, which is why we are giving you full control over your KPIs, start end dates, budget, frequency, schedule, caps. We have it all covered for you inside. Geofencing app audiences, nothing like having a predefined predefined audience segments to help you streamline your campaign creation process inside our platform, okay? You have access to over 350,000 audience segments, apps, sites, and TVs. Geofencing app exchanges have access to, uh, you have access to over 100 plus exchanges built inside, live ramp, now some marketing, cloud. I mean, we this way too many to list. Uh, you could choose sources like Spotify, LinkedIn, AOL, DraftKings, and, and so many more. So geofencing app targeting as well. So geofencing uh, geofencing app is all about hyper-local targeting, zero proximity. You can literally zero down on any location you'd like to target, no matter what DMA, country, et cetera, as long as you have you know, you know, lock in coordinates with that location via a robust mapping system, you'll be able to run ads within that location. Um, uh, within this area, you'll be able to find parting options, zip codes, longitude, latitudes using our polygon map. So we have a conversion tracker built in as well. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could track your uh, track whenever someone enters and leaves uh, a geofence, you can do that within our platform. You have that app inventory as well, as I mentioned, the ability to tap, uh, to target devices on web, mobile app, connected TV, Apple iOS, Apple Mac, Microsoft, you have full control. Um, we give you an apps list as well. So let's say within our reporting system, you found that Fox 5 and you know HGTV were your you know sites for you to target, right? Like they were like sites that were sending you a lot of traffic, impressions, and clicks. You could actually target just those sites alone so your ads run right within those sites. Um, you have uh, app blogs as well, so you can see like what apps are getting you the most clicks, and you could also retarget them as well. All righty, so let's continue moving forward. So our technology is focused around hyper-local targeting with flexibility, so you can target colleges, stadiums, events, and exact locations. As I mentioned, using our mapping system, we put a lot of time and emphasis into this, guys. I'm sure, I'm sure you're ready. So let's uh, dive into the demo. I'm just going to get out of here and stop the yapping. So uh, here we go. Let me open it up here. And here we are. So this is the geofencing app. Um, right up at the top, you have your balance, right? So you can see my balance here is set up at 100. I have three lines. So generally, when you go to like Google and Facebook, they refer to, you know, you know, they refer to lines as, you know, campaigns. We refer to them as lines as part of, you know, the programmatic process. So you're literally reserving a line within the algorithm to run your campaign. There's no human interaction as, you know, like Google and Facebook. It's all done programmatically. So there's no human interaction. As long as your ad meets the guidelines, then you'll be fine. So you have your total app list, just like I mentioned, you could target uh, apps within your report, which I'll go over in just a second. You have your total site list as well. We have this awesome chat, which you can see here. People are just like loving it. And this is not anything that I'm making up, folks. These are real users in here that are using our platform and just loving it, man, like just really enjoying it genuinely. So let's go ahead, all right? You notice down at the side, we have these all numbered down. So what I'm going to do is, is before we go down the numbers, I'm just going to go into top up. So we do have a minimum, okay? But I want to clarify right away. This minimum is not per campaign or any of that mess. It's as little as $75, okay? So $75 supports all of your campaigns. So you could spread your budget out however you want. You don't have to put that 75 in one campaign. 
if anything, you could charge whatever amount you want and all, but you know, the minimum is 75. We did that because, you know, the these guys have to get paid to run your campaigns and that goes directly to them. Okay. International top ups, we require a one hundred dollar minimum and that's done manually through PayPal. We have to be careful, you know, this is all being, you know, processed and stuff. So just got to be careful on this side of the ballpark. All right. So let's start with uh, our first option here. So this is where it all happens. This is where you would basically do all of your geofencing. So you notice you have your name, type, uh, records, valid records, and the status for it within the algorithm. Okay. So I'm going to go to add new audience really quick. Just give that a little second. Give me one moment here. All right. So this this is this is really where it all happens. This is where you would do all of your geofencing. And I'm going to go ahead and type in uh I'm going to type in a uh, local dealership in the area, right? I'm just going to name this dealer dealer number 1. And I'm doing this all in real time. You have a bunch of targeting options. Uh you could do IDs, ranges, IP ranges, zips, user IDs, domains and specific domains. So if you want to target specific domains, that's up to you. So now I'm going to turn on my satellite here just so I have better visuals and I'm going to get up and close and personal on this dealership. So this is how close we can get here. So I'm going to just go ahead and start drawing my shapes. You want to make sure that your shapes are nice and tight. You don't want any spillovers coming from anywhere. If I wanted to like geofence, like let's say just a portion of this dealership because, you know, I've been there before and let's say, I know where the lounge is. I could certainly geofence that that uh, lounge right now. All right, so I just did it. I just, I literally just did it. I created a geofence. I could zoom out and really have an idea as to where I'm at, okay? So we're done. I could go ahead and add that audience. And what'll happen is you'll see it just like you see here. You see here, you have a, your, your list of geofences. So now I'm gonna go to our next uh, area. This is the area where you could find a 350,000 audience segments that are basically pretty much all set up for you. Okay, like you don't have to set any of this up within your campaign. You would just simply associate it with your campaign. So now that you have a geofence, you follow the steps. Number one here. Now you're going to follow number two. And this is optional too. So you could just go right to lines, but you know, I'm just going to go for this example right so i'm going to type in roku here remember we were just talking about roku and like how you could target people on tv right so i'm going to show you here so you have brands electronics roku okay so what does that mean so you we're going to be targeting users who are interested in electronics okay and we could choose to associate this right boom done i just associated it right i know you're wondering well gee who, who did you associate that with I associated it with my lines, which I'll show you in just a few seconds. Notice the behavior here. You got that all set. Technology. So what that basically means is that it's focused on the behavior of the user. It's looking for activity. It's looking to see where they are. Is it an active device or not? All right. So the provider is Affinity Answers. And you know what's the beauty about all of this? Unlike other places, we give you a CPM. It, it updates by itself, but this is a set CPM, so you have an idea as to what you're gonna pay per 1,000. And we, you know, created these little question marks, so whenever you're lost somewhere, you could always hover over it, and you got the answer right there. So a dollar 49 is what you would pay for 1,000 impressions, like coming from TV, which is insane. So that's pretty much it for this area. I'm gonna go into site list really quick. So site list is super simple, like. On, within your reports, when you generated your reports, you'll see the sites that are working for you. It's as simple as copying and pasting those sites here, and then you just give it a name, done, okay? So you could associate that site list with your campaign. You could do the same for apps as well. And we also have conversion tracking. You remember how I was telling you guys, yeah, like, you know, we give you that ability to um, track conversions within certain locations you could go hybrid you could view you go view or click i usually just leave it at hybrid post view expiration dates post click expiration dates minimum minimum minutes per conversion we got that all set there for you we have training on all of this stuff so we break it down for you okay then you have your creatives here uh we give you a bunch of options just like i mentioned if you're going to go with digital 
okay we give you a ton of banner options for you to scale um, you could add those urls as well you have your video you have your audio as well so you got that all set there for you to use within your lines so let's go into lines really quick and so you notice here we have our line name budget type budget daily spend and start date you got that all here for you and so what i'm going to go ahead and start the process of you know creating a line okay we don't call them campaigns we call them lines so you have you could go basic or you could go advanced all right so at the top you have your name for that line you have your kpis we could you could go cpa i'm sorry ctr okay you have your cpa vctr viewability so this is just basically how it's all about how you want to focus your campaign so for this one we're going to go ctr we're going to go standard we're going to leave that as is we're going to leave the date as it as is for this example um lifetime cost so it'll be 30 dollars. so remember we don't you, your minimum top up is 75 dollars, but you could spread it out how you want per campaign okay so check this out you notice something here so for $30, I'll get about 10,000 impressions. That's not enough, honestly. Like, I'm going to be transparent. That's not enough to really justify anything, you know. But, you know, over time, you, you guys will see. You'll see the within your reports, and you'll start seeing clicks. When you, you, when you hit that number, that's the number that you want to stick to. And I, I talk about that in the training. So daily cost, you got it here. So the daily cost would be $10. We have uh, the ability to do dynamic budget multiplier. Um, we got that all there for you. Frequency, so you can cap the frequency. So what this basically means is that um, this is the number of times that you want someone to visually see your ads. It gets annoying for people sometimes, so you know we usually leave it at, at, at a default too. But you know for here we you know you got it at six. Okay. So daily pricing, you could enable that. Um, uh, you got that all there. You got your minimum bid, max bid, your base bid. You have your optimization schedule. But here is where all the meat is, right? Because you remember I showed you our third-party audience, which is where our 350,000 audience segments are. Um, you could also do this manually. So like, let's say um, you didn't want to associate any of these, but you wanted to do it yourself. By default, we have these as default because these are the networks that are connected to your Google, to your social sites and apps and things like that. So we left these as default for you guys. OK, so for countries, your base, you need a base when you're doing these geofencing campaigns. You like you couldn't do a geofencing uh, campaign in the US. And, and for your base, you have it at <clears throat> excuse me, you have it as the UK. It's not going to run. It's just going to say denied, rejected. So you want to make sure your base is the United States. You know, you have your regions here. You have your DMAs. You got that all there for you. You have your day parting as well. Um, you have your app list. So remember, if you want to associate that list on your on, within the side that I mentioned here, you could do that. Um, you have your inventory as well. So if you want to go TV, you just choose connected TV. So the individual has to be connected to the V's and all of these options here. Uh, you could associate your creatives as well so when you associate your creatives it'll show up here in this box i don't have any right now so i don't have any associated this is just a test account my active account is super busy but you know i just wanted to show you guys here you could associate your pixels as well so you could track your conversions and most importantly associate your audiences so um here is one that i have so i could associate it within my campaign super easy um and just continue to associate as i go and i break this all down in the training but that's basically how you would set up your geofencing campaign uh, you have your base and really all the magic happens right down in this area when you once you've created your geofence you need to make sure you associate it with that base so hopefully that's clear so let's go down into reports i promise i know you guys have a lot of questions i see them coming in I'm going to answer them toward the end so usually when you have your line created it'll show here you would just simply click generate report um, you have your line reports here so you have your total clicks impressions you got that all broken down there your total line reports creative reports you may find that some uh, uh, digital camp uh, banners are not working for you some tv campaigns are just not doing anything for you 
Um, you have your geo reports here based on how you what area you geofence, your region report, you got that all there, your video report, you got that there, your device report, you had that there as well. And that's pretty much it for this area. Uh, we have tickets as well. As always, we you know provide support 24/7. We have a new tech specialist, Wally, who is just incredible. He's been doing some incredible things for us. And of course, we provide you with over 10 plus videos and a really cool PDF, uh, it's a success guide um, that I uh, put together to show you how you can you just really, really, really scale out this platform. But that's really geofencing in a box. It's in a it's an incredible platform, and I cannot wait for you to get inside of here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my presentation up and just continue on forward. Uh, we're not finished here. We have a lot more stuff to go over. So let's recap all features. So you have this incredible dashboard where you can network with all members. Um, remember, everything is uh, numbered on the side here. So you have them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven steps that's all it is that's all you you need to run these campaigns we made it super super easy for you to use you got your profile here your top up remember is only 75 dollars that's it um that is really it it's not per campaign or anything of like that mess it's just one time that's it right and then here you have your geofence you simply geofence and you associate it with your campaign so you're getting traffic only from this area here OK, and I'll go back to the chat. If you guys don't take my word for it, I'll go back to the chat and I'll show you guys that are actually doing this right now. Um, but, you know, you got those three hundred and fifty thousand audience segments, which is huge. You got your Roku. If you want to you know, do your real estate, you want to target real estate, that market, you could do that as well. You have your behavior, your category, your provider, your CPM is already there for you. So you have you know, you could plan better. You could plan in advance and you don't have to wonder, oh my goodness, how much am I going to pay for my CPM? You got it all there for you. You have your site list, you have your app list, your conversion tracking, your creatives, uh, and then you have your lines, of course, all broken down in detail for you. Super transparent. We don't hide anything here. So if you want to choose a particular exchange, you just simply look it up down in this area. And that's it. And you would associate it with your campaign. You have your reports here, and uh, which is just again broken down in detail. So like if you have, you know, you're seeing that HGTV is just bringing you a good amount of traffic. Fox News, Dallas News is bringing you good traffic. Then you'll see that there, and you could associate it with your campaign. So it's not all over the place. We made it super super easy to use. And of course, we have our tickets. We have an amazing new tech specialist on board with a super solid team. Definitely, you guys are in good hands. That's my word to you. Good hands here. 10 plus videos, we cover everything in detail for you, all broken down for you in detail as well. And then, of course, you have your conversion tracking as well. This is how it looks when you set it up. Um, this is exactly how it is. So you could associate it with your URL or your images. So you have more you know, defined uh, idea as to like what is actually happening with your conversions. So now, before you dive in, I want to let you know right away, as you've previously, previously seen, companies in the space, not many, are charging $5,000 per campaign, which is crazy, five grand per campaign. Um, you don't need to maintain a massive budget here. Registration fees up to $10,000, which is crazy to me. But you could charge that instead. And what makes this 10x worse is that uh, most of the geofencing trackers want you to maintain a minimum with them. So it's not only like, yeah, you know, 10 grand per or five grand per campaign, but some of these guys are saying, no, you also need to maintain that as long as you use this, which is crazy. Not here. <laughs> as marketers, especially when starting up, it just isn't realistic. So thanks to the programmatic mani uh, maniacs, mechanics for allowing us to uh, allowing us the opportunity uh, to introduce this technology to you. And of course, our amazing development team and head of development, Asan Hussein, who's just amazing. He's been a blessing to us. So what is the cost? So we debated for hours. We knew um, a lot of our Red Twin Media members would be happy with this technology. We knew that a lot of you would be going out there offering this as a service. And we really, really like wanted to build something solid that you could use 
and have confidence in. So $2,997 is very reasonable. You, however, you know, don't need to worry about that today. All right. So you won't be paying any of that today. So that's out of the window, gone. So with all the energy we poured in, you won't even pay $997. 197 or 997 which is very reasonable with all the traffic exchanges that we're giving you access to inside you're not even going to pay 997 so are you ready to start geofencing are you ready hopefully you are so your registration fee today is only 119 zero monthly cost but wait 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 a minute because we're not done keep in mind that our that your one time Activation fee grants you lifetime access and superior support with our new support specialist. So you, you now have all the control you need to charge your own clients your own fee. And at the same time, you can run those hyper-local geofencing campaigns. But wait a minute, isn't this a live webinar? You guys know that I always take care of my guys on my webinars. So I'm going to save you $23 on this webinar right now. Okay, so your activation fee becomes now $96, no minimum per campaign. And this is just an option for you as well. All right, so I know you're excited. I see people asking for the link. I'm actually just gonna drop it really quick because the chat is just going crazy right now. So before you guys chop my head off, I'm gonna uh, just go ahead and share this really quick. Uh, there it is, those are all the links right there. But let me get back to this really quick so you guys have a bit more understanding as to where, what's going on here, all right? So remember, $96 is all you're paying one time. There's no hidden anything like that. Um, optional, um, we have direct mail exchanges, okay? Direct mail exchanges that allow you to associate your direct mailing with Expedia, all right? Which is huge. If you want access to those exchanges, It'll bring you back up to, you know, you know, having to pay the $23 is still keeping you at 119. It's not two grand, three grand, or anything like that. 997. You're literally paying 119 full time, one time with everything you just seen before your eyes. Okay. So both of those links are now in the chat. Definitely take a look. So let's do an overview really quick. You're gonna be saving 23 dollars here you have access to our geo fencing app campaigns with the ability to create those hyper local geo fencing campaigns kpis you have those start end dates budgets or frequencies um, the ability to associate your geo fence with your ad campaign which is insane nobody's doing this right now that's just, this is why i believe this is really a game changer and if you don't believe me i'm going to go into the chat in just a couple of minutes and show you uh, geofencing app exchanges, over 100 plus traffic exchanges built inside Live Ramp and so many others with sources like Spotify, LinkedIn, AOL, eBay, DraftKings, USA Today, and many others. Um, as I mentioned, you have your tracker as well. So you could track those conversions within certain areas. You have those app inventories. So you could uh, target your in app, Android, Apple iOS, Apple Mac, Microsoft. You got that all there for you. Um, you could choose to target app lists. Uh, and, and you got your app logs as well, site lists. You could target those sites as well. Um, and with the ability to resell within your own interface as well. So you could easily do that by just simply creating those campaigns and charging your own fees on top. All right, so, uh, and then you're gonna get that step-by-step -step virtual tour as well, which is included as part of this with the 10 plus videos, the guide as well on the back end. Um, so for this portion of the presentation, before we wrap things up, we're gonna go into Q&A. I see that there's a lot of questions in the chat. I just typed them up really quick for you. So what is the minimum per campaign? The minimum here is, you know, we have zero per campaign minimum. So you can run as many ads as you'd like for yourself or clients. Can I geofence international? Absolutely. You can target other countries and locations. Just make sure to, uh, you know, lock in all the data in advance before you do any of that. Do you offer any training as part of the platform? We have 10 plus videos pre-recorded for you to use and live training as well, along with a really cool uh, PDF guide that I added on the back end. A lot of golden nuggets in there as well. Um, I'm new to the space. Will this work for me? 
Um, 100% newbie friendly. There's nothing that's difficult about this. In the training, it's super transparent. Step by step, I guide you on how to set up a, a really good solid campaign. Um, and and then do you have a minimum top up? The minimum top up is only 75, and that's it. We have warning indicators inside your campaign. Whenever our system detects that your campaign is not sufficient enough, we'll we'll let you know in advance so you can make better make better planning decisions. So, what types of locations can I target? You could target stadiums, events, colleges, parking lots. You choose. It's all included as part of this. Do we have access to all traffic exchanges? You have access to all exchanges, absolutely no cost. So you can scale that as you need at that ninety-six dollar price point. And if you want that added, you know, direct mail exchanges, you would just, it'll bring you back up to 119. Um, can I target traffic sources such as sites and apps? In your reports, when you see those sites and apps, you can target those sites and apps and, you know, go from there. When uh, the geofence has been set, does this mean uh, the, uh, the traffic will come from this area? Yes. Okay. So once you set up that geofence, this is where all the traffic is going to come from, right? So remember, that one-time fee is $96, zero monthly costs, total investment plus the top up. You're looking at $171, no upsells at all. That is all, okay? Um, no monthly fees or anything like that. The registration links are now in the chat. Um, one thing we were getting uh, asked a lot about, and I wanted to bring it up on this webinar, I, I actually invited some of our current members to come back out. Um, you guys have been asking us for like, like a full out white label. And I, I went to the drawing board. I went back to my team and I said, look, what can we do? What can we do next week to make this possible so that our guys can actually go in and put in their own top of fee, put in their own brand in their own URL. How can we actually, can we make that possible? And, you know, I got the thumbs up for my team and in short, that's what we're going to do for you guys. So we're going to enable you the ability to white label the entire platform is going to be a bit pricey, but this is only for those of you who are serious, who are very serious about, um, we actually currently have about a couple of members now that are taking this serious. All activations will be done next week. Um, so you'll be able to, you know, position yourself like a professional out there with your own branding, your own color for your interface and your own top of fee. You can request payouts. Payouts are made on the first and second of each month. So we pay you, okay? We pay you. So that is a one-time fee of $199.97. You get your stats, your payouts, you can request branding and your own URL included. We had to bring it up this high because there's a lot of development. There's a lot of things that we have to do on our side to really get this up for you individually, okay? So that's it. No pressure there, but it's there for you to access. And that's only for this weekend only. All right. So you could charge your own fee on top, paid on the first and second of each month, meaning that our team, our corporation will be paying you on the first and second of each month. Amazing. So the link is in the chat. But overall, if you just want to enter and access all the exchanges that you've seen, that is a one time $96. So remember, here's a breakdown. $96, $23 discount, that gets you right in. $119 includes the direct mail exchanges, all right? And then for $199.97, that gets you the full white label with everything included, okay? So lifetime activation, no monthly fees, registration link is now in the, in the chat, okay? All right? So I'm going to start answering your questions. I see that there are more of you asking for the link. Um, I just put it there, so I'm not sure why you guys can't see it. Just got in. Congrats, Wayne. All right, I'm just going to bring the questions up, and let's see here. All right. So you want to want me to open up the platform again? Absolutely. I'm actually going to just log into my account. I'm going to log out really quick. I'm going to log into mine. Just bear with me one little second. I'm just going to pause my screen really quick. Don't freak out. Just going to pause my screen really quick. Just going to log in. Got some personal data here. So just going to log in. And I'm going to show you my account really quick. And there we are. Okay. 
So this is my own personal account. I told you guys that I will go back to the chat and this is so you guys can see. And this is, these are real users from our Red Tour Media community. You see it here. Let's start at the top. You know, the platform rocks. My mind is buzzing. This platform is a launch pad for many different businesses and, uh, and marketing services. Um, this platform is great for B2B, B2C. Um, you know, just people leaving feedback on the launch itself. Um, let's see here in our developer, Asan, educating members, how it's all done programmatically. There's no humans interaction in this process. Um, let's see here. And there's even members that are already setting up meetings inside. Let me see here. You can even, you can even go after local niches, SEOs. Let's see here. I'm stoked. All right, Golden Nuggets. I'm pretty sure I will have my first customer this week. We're occurring. This platform is a local atomic bomb. Like, this is what it's about. So let me go back to reports here. Let me show you really quick because I see a lot of questions coming in for reports. So this is how you do it. So you go to, to reports, you generate your report, and then they show here. I have nothing running for this campaign currently. But when you do run it, you'll you'll see that data. Excuse me. Um, and then I'm going to go into the geofences that I have set up here. But remember, to geofence is super simple. Um, you set it up using our map, which is already built in. You choose a location. You get up close. Okay. So if I want to target, you know, this specific neighborhood here for whichever reason. Or if I want to target, you know, people who are in this library over here, I could go ahead and I could, you know, obviously I don't want to be negligent and just do whatever, but, you know, it needs to be real. You could get up, up close and personal. Okay. Let's see here. Down, down, and down. Done. Okay. I would just click save and then associate it with my lines. All right. So I'm going to go to some, some lines that I have pre-set up already. And then I'm going to go into Kia, Tampa, really quick, this campaign. And then I'm just going to expand these really quick. So you can see how I have some stuff set up here. So remember how I was saying that you could go ahead and um, you could manually set up your campaign itself. So if you want to choose a specific exchange, you'll search it there. Um, if you want to go e-commerce, maybe you're working with a, a client who's in that space, Wayfair, Overstock. All right, retail me not. You got that there. Uh, real estate, maybe Zillow. Okay, you got that there. Retail.com or people who are just searching for real estate. Sports, you got that all there. World Wrestling Entertainment, ESPN, individuals who are watching ESPN. All right, then you have your audio there. All right, so you got a bunch of different options for you to scale overall. And then you have the ability to associate those creatives and associate your geofence, which you see I have one set up here. Um, within my campaign and it's easy it's so easy right like you just simply choose it you add it and that's it that's all you do all right that's that's really pretty much it um and then you click go i mean once you run those campaigns you're pretty much set your conversion pixels will look like this so you could track those conversion pixels and um yeah that's that's it for that let me go back to the chat if you're as soon as you sign in do me a favor the minute you top up go ahead and leave a comment so you know we could welcome you in i see that there's a lot of you already taking action congratulations to you um all right so wayne andrew has a question what's the advertising cost so at the advertising cost for the platform itself is 75 dollars. so that goes to the network and that's their compensation to run your ads, okay? And um, that's pretty much it. And it's not per campaign, so we're clear. So you're not paying per campaign. It's literally one time. One time, and when your, your balance starts depleting, you obviously want to keep adding to your balance so that you can keep running your lines, you know, so that they can keep getting those impressions and clicks. All right. Let's see here. All right. Uh, let's see here. Can we run image campaign 350 for TV or needs to be video? Oh, Pete, that's a good question. So I'll just go back into creatives and I'll show you. 
um, for your creatives, they need to like if you're gonna do like if you're gonna run those Roku ads, I really suggest. I mean, you got to keep it around 30 seconds. You just go ahead and you check check off video. This is your video option. You upload your video. I have training on that. You would upload it, and that's it. It gets submitted to the network. We give you statuses and everything all on your end. Okay. So it's obviously not going to be, you know, that can't be the size. That'll all disappear. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Uh, but that's a good question. Let's see here. My clients are on a podcast, host speakers, business songs. Is this the product I could suggest for them? Absolutely. Absolutely, Raven. If you, if you want to get them more traffic, if you want to get, you know, you just, it, you know, it could run. Like, it, it depends, Raven. Like, let's say you're in Atlanta, for example, or you're in Dallas. And this podcast is primarily for the people of Dallas, right? You could run it around Dallas, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, let's see, Rex, congrats. Let's see, how do I, what do we use to get clients? So Pete has a question. How would we use this to get clients? I have training on that inside, but really, if you're if you if you're thinking more about you know, selling this as a service, you may want to consider our full out white label. Okay. Can you please drop the links? There you go. I just dropped the links again in the chat, all the links. Again, I know it's a bunch of links here, but you know, they're all for each individual. Can you go over the pricing again? Absolutely. Let me bring that up. Alrighty. So this is the pricing here. So when you enter, it gives you, you get access to all the exchanges that you currently see, the 350,000 exchanges, 100 plus sources, you have access to that regardless. But for 119, you get access to the direct mail exchanges. If you wanna do a white label where you're thinking big picture, you're thinking like, hey, I'm gonna make some money with this. I want my own stuff. I wanna charge my own fee. You're thinking like a big boy, right? So then you would go ahead and go with that option and coordinate with us and we will get you set up, okay? I'm overseas having a hard time paying. All right, let, there you go. All right, so if you're, whoops, if you are overseas, do me the favor, I'm gonna leave an email in the chat because we had this issue the last time. Dev support at redtorrentmedia.com. Email Wally now and tell them that you're having issues, you're overseas, and we'll get you a separate link for that. Let's see here. Alrighty, so do me one little, all right, so give me one second really quick, just gonna give you guys the correct link to the white label. It looks like some of you are having issues with it. Um, let me see here. It's opening up fine here. Let me see here. Yep, that's the white label right there. That is the white label. It's opening up fine here. It's the last link. You want to make sure to click the last link. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm fairly new. Will this work for me? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'll go back and show you again, like it's so easy to create a line with the platform, but you know, we numbered everything down to make the process easy, but lines is where it's all, you know, where the work comes in. Cause you really need to make sure you, you did your due diligence in advance. Um, so this is a line that we have set up already. Oh no, this is not it. Let me see. Yeah, this is not it, but yeah, like, at, you know, in the training, we break all of this down and we have these question marks here. So if you ever have any questions, you don't know what something is, you can click over these question marks and so so you're not lost. OK. And, you know, really, you know, if you want to go basic, start basic for now, you know, which will shut down a lot of the more advanced stuff. And you can go from there and make it super easy on yourself. Um, you know, to be honest, if you're starting off, I would go down and choose the, you know, from the 350,000 audience, you know, exchanges and, you know, go from there. 
Okay. So you can see here, I just typed in real estate. I know the market is huge. So, you know, you could target individuals who are buying and selling homes or selling their homes. But look at the CPMs on this. It's crazy. Nine cents. Nine cents. Crazy. People who are moving. So if you're working with a moving company, okay, you got a lot of you got a lot of options here. Yeah, a lot of options. <laughs> All right, there you go. There's the link. How effective can this be with pay per call? Uh, you know, Lance, you got to give it a shot. You got to give it a shot. Create those campaigns. I mean, uh, to be completely honest with you and transparent, I haven't tried pay per call with our platform, but you know, because you're targeting a very specific area and because a uh, paper call offers sometimes are restricted to specific areas, this is like this is like a little haven for a paper call, you know. Um, let me go back into the chat. I'm in. Awesome. Congrats, Cindy. Congrats. Please send me the link. There is the link. Can we get into the program and top up later? Unfortunately, you see all of these exchanges here. We don't make any of these exchanges public. There's a whole lot more. Like, for example, look at this, right? Look at this drop down menu. There's so many, so many to choose from. But, you know, we, you know, we have some ties with the programmatic mechanics that you've seen and we have an agreement with them. So we have it set up. So you need to top up first. So every member that you see here, like within the chat have topped up first before they even, you know, use our platform. So keep that all in mind. All right. So there's no link here. Can't find the chat. All right. Coverage location of region. Right. So I'll go back to the geofencing portion of the platform. Yes, you can pause and you could edit your lines. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can pause and you could edit those lines. This is a geofence that we have set up. We're going to turn the satellite on, get up close and personal with it. And here we go. But if I really want to get like up close and personal with it, where I'm like just um, the dealership, I've been to this dealership before and their lounge area is somewhere around here. To be completely honest, usually people who hang out in lounges, they usually run around the whole dealership looking around. So I would just geofence the whole thing associated with my campaign and target users who are looking for a car. So like I'll go into third party audience, right? I'm going to type in car really quick and then let's see what we get. So here we go, auto buyers, boom, sport cars, boom. Let's associate that, done. All right, boom. All right, okay, we already have that associated. So um, let's see another one. Let's see what we got. Uh, do, 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 do. Someone who's looking for sedans, wagons, hatchbacks, boom. Behaviors, done. My CPM is one penny, done. Go into my lines, create a line. Very simple, go into create a new line. And then look. Look, watch this. Go down all the way to the bottom, associate that audience, and look, look at where it's at. Look at where it's at, right? Here we are, auto buyers, sports cars, right? I could associate it, very easy. And then, and then you know, I'll show you all the technical stuff as far as like how you can add it and add one at a time or remove others, but that's how it's done. Super, super easy. It's pretty easy. Uh, let's see. Yes, I recommend doing one G one geofence at a time. I don't recommend running off, you know, doing too many when you're starting off. Do one at a time. And, and what you could do for, for one client is run separate campaigns, but they don't need to be at your max budget. They could be at whatever amount you set it to be. Can I get the links? There you go. There is the links. It looks like so many of you are already on board. So do me the favor. Um, if you've already just took action today, if you've taken action, go ahead and comment in in the chat box. Just comment in so I can shout you out. 
um, in the chat box. We're coming toward the end of the webinar. I see that there's a couple of more questions. Um, so go ahead and comment in, in the chat box if you take an action. So Jennifer, John, Rex, Robert Hudgens, Ernest Hill. Let's see here. There's so many taking action. So congrats to you, man. Congrats. You guys are in for a real treat. Let's see here. Can you explain the direct mail option? So the direct mail option is connected to Experian and a few other top exchanges. So how that works is pretty cool. Like you could associate your, your current campaigns with it based off wherever they're sending out their mail. And uh, you know that we get competitors on these calls. So like I could only really give the basics, but inside the training, I dive into this, but it's just, it's super cool. You have access to it. You can scale it, scale it along with your own direct mail if you want. So, you know, it, it works out. So you could physically do that by yourself externally. And at the same time, scale out these direct mail options along with your campaign. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, so there is the link. Can we do PayPal? So PayPal is only allowed for international top-ups only. And to get into this platform, we don't allow PayPal at this time. However, what you can do is you can email us support, dev support at redtorrentmedia.app. So if you're listening in from your phone, uh you're you know watching you're having technical difficulties trying to find the link you could email me and we'll get you that link can this work for clickbank i don't see why not i mean you have a lot of different options here to choose from let's see here so yeah the direct mail exchanges is essentially exchanges that you can associate with your current direct mail campaigns so hopefully that makes sense okay so i'll go to it here i'll go into third party audiences so you guys don't think i'm making this up give me one little tiny second Ooh. cotton mouth you can see here we have experience true touch direct mail CPM $1.17, which is really good. So all this basically means is that based off how you have your can your line set up, based off your geofence, there's a lot of different variables here. So based off how you have everything set up, you can go ahead and associate it with one of these direct mail uh, campaigns or orders. So you, you got one here, look, channel preference, direct mail orders, Blue Kai. These are individuals who are shopping or likely just doing some shopping around town. All right, so Denmark, power reach, housing and property, direct mail, no thank you. Okay, so you got a lot of different options here, a lot of different options, even auto insurance. I know that there's a lot of you in here today that are doing the auto, uh, the insurance thing. Uh, on the last call, we had some a couple of uh, insurance guys. That was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. So JL Hugh, congrats. I'm getting in now. All right. All right. So I'm just going to pause my screen really quick and drop the links individually. Cause it's for whatever reason, people are saying that it's uh, redirecting. So I'm just going to grab these links. And give me one little tiny second. So this is this is link number one. I'm just gonna drop that individually in the chat. So the $96 is one time fee, no monthly, and then that's for life. There you go. That's the first link. The second link is our direct mail exchanges, which you get access to. So 119 added 
direct mail exchanges. Everything stays the same. You're just getting the direct mail exchanges added. All right, and then this one is our white label. Okay, so this is the, the link that, this is for those of you who are serious about this. I see that there's a lot of you already that are taking action on this. So do me the favor when you when you signed up for the white label, send us an email immediately. Support dev support. Sorry, dev support at redtorrentmedia.app. All right, so there is all the links. Ronnie says, thank you, dude. You're welcome, Ronnie. You're welcome. I mean, you know, this is, you know, why we did this. We poured a lot of energy into it, and this was uh, essentially the outcome. I mean, you can see it here. This is like real feedback. You guys can read this. This is real feedback. Users are already trying to propose this out there. The competition is low. All right, so Rudy, I'm gonna give you my email so you could. Uh... All right, there we go. I see no links. There they are. All right, just gonna grab all the links. Give me one little tiny second. And I'm gonna get back to your questions. Give me one little second. There they are. Boom. All right. Gregory is asking, can this work for pay per call? Absolutely. Absolutely. As I mentioned, excuse me, as I mentioned earlier, you know, there's a lot of networks out there that, you know, that have offers available for consultants to promote. Um, a big advantage point here for you would be the fact that you could laser target your campaign versus running up to Google, running to Google and and doing all of that stuff. You you're you're you literally have access to the same sources that they have, the same exact sources. Let's see. There it is. All right, let's see. If a client has no websites, uh, Pete is asking, can this still work? Absolutely. They have a phone number. They have a phone number. You could promote that phone number. Click to call. You could do things like that. You could do that with a URL. So you would put a URL in there that'll lead to a click to call, you know, you can do that. So that's a little golden nugget right there. You could run with that. Definitely run with that. Um, if you wanted to get the first option, the second option, uh, and you had, all right, well, you would probably have to email me and, you know, we'll, we'll work it out. If you meant to get the second option, no worries. We'll take care of it. Just email me and, We'll take care of it. All right, so we're coming to a close really soon. If there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer them while I'm here. If there's something that you felt that I missed, definitely let me know. I'm happy to touch back on it. Um, let's see here. Do you have a payment plan for the white label? No, not at this time. Unfortunately, that is a one-time fee, very reasonable. Um, you get the ability to change the logo, change the primary colors, and you know you get a URL, you get to track things, and that's gonna be published live next week. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm excited for it. Let's see. All 
so the email for us is dev support at red tour media that at how would i price this to a client from the from the general look just 96 dollar price point i mean you would do this for them essentially you would give them their updates you would set this up for them but it's not like it's not like these other platforms where you're just tracking you know offline conversions you know what i mean like here you have access to a plethora of different sources that you could selectively choose and cherry pick those leads that are within that geofence Literally, you know, it's crazy uh, when we launched on Thursday, this is, this really happened when we launched on Thursday, someone launched a campaign and they're already getting traffic from a very specific area. It, it, you know, it's crazy because like, this is, it's laser targeted, it's laser targeted. So I'm saying crazy in a good way, you know, like this is, it's just crazy. So they started running that ad. And as a matter of fact, I'll show you here. They left a comment in the chat. Uh, let's see here. Someone, oh, here they are. I appear to be getting traffic already from one of my campaigns from different type of devices. That's great. Uh, you can, oh, that's, let's see here. So you can see here, someone literally is getting real traffic from a specific area. So there you go. Um, do we offer support? Yes, we offer support and we also offer training. Let me go to the training page, I'll show you. And we have a guide here for you to download. So as soon as you get in, download this guide. It's a lot of good stuff on there, guys. Yeah, that yeah, support. Yeah. That, uh... All right. So how long are you going to keep this open? I don't know. Usually when this is going to be, this is technically our last webinar. So now that we've wrapped up this, you know, it's the fourth quarter, um, we go back to the drawing board and we replan and um, we have big plans for this. We're looking at a bunch of other avenues for our users. We were thinking, I'm just going to put it out there early. We were thinking on building uh, a mobile application that uh, you could use to create your campaigns from just to make the process easy. So like while you're on the go, you could actually create your campaigns from like your phone, kind of like you would do with like Facebook ads and stuff like that. Correct, Chuck. So you would charge whatever you want on the back office. That's correct. And you get paid on the first and second. We will be sending out tax forms. So this is not, you know, tax free stuff, you know, so. Um, but when you get in, if you do decide to, you know, take us on on the white label, email me and I will coordinate with you myself. And what I'll do is, you know, I'll get you set up, you know, we're going to be publishing this out next week. So it's not going to be instantaneous. Once you enroll, you just coordinate with us. I'm thinking of just forming a little group for our guys, the guys that do the white label and just, you know, keeping it as a type group because this is serious stuff, man. This is like, you're going to be going out there, charging your fees and you, you want to know what's going on. Where are the updates and things like that? And I want to make sure that you're updated. So if you do decide to take us up on it, there you go. You know, you're going to be supported. All right, so so Nikki is asking if I have ten different clients, how many campaigns can I run at a time? You can run as many campaigns as you want, uh, Nikki. As many campaigns as you want, no restrictions. It's it's just there for you. I mean, as long as your budget is able to sustain those campaigns, then you'll be fine. But running like like straight off the you know back like to be transparent like if you're thinking like all right I'm gonna try running a campaign for five bucks like one campaign the amount of impressions you're gonna get for that is not enough to really measure out like all right this is the source that's getting me conversion this is the source that's getting me calls this is the source that's really drumming up some business for this client of mine 
you really need to, you know, scale out over time, scale out over time, you know, think long-term with this stuff. You know, it's a different ball game, you know, usually with like Google and Facebook, people just create them fast. They create those campaigns fast, but you know, this is, we're dealing with lines here. Lines is our lines are completely different than, uh, what you would normally deal with, with, uh, Facebook and stuff like that. All right. All right, so I wanna shout out everybody who took action today on this webinar. So if you could go ahead and leave the best comment you got, I will be selecting someone today. Um, I'm gonna do something really cool right now. I'm gonna fund someone's account right now. So if you could leave the best comment that you got, letting me know, look, I'm in, I don't care if it's crazy or not, just go ahead and leave it in the chat. I'm gonna fund somebody's account today. Um, so that you could go ahead and start running your campaigns like right away. So go ahead and leave those comments in the chat. I just got in. Awesome. Pete, Ernest, Tom. It's time to change the industry. Nice. Robert Hudgens is all right. Nice. <laughs> These comments are hilarious. You guys are interesting. Uh, great presentation. Awesome, awesome. Harold Smith, there you go. There's the links. Awesome. So I'm going to choose Robert. So Robert, I'm going to be funding you today. Uh, definitely reach out to me, Dev Support. You're going to receive $50 towards your top up. Um, and there we go, man. So that is it. Congratulations to everyone who came out to this presentation. I hope that you left with a lot of value. I really gave it all I had. And uh, this is not it. You know, this could be potentially my last release for the year. I'm not sure. We're working on this app for this platform and a lot of really cool stuff. That is pretty much it. The work doesn't stop here. We still have a lot more work to do. It's, you know, this time starts now. You know, you have access to a really good tool a tool with a lot of great sources for you to scale. And um, that that's pretty much it. So I'm going to be in the chat. I'm going to leave the screen open. So I'll be in the chat answering any other questions that you have. And that's pretty much it. You guys have an amazing, amazing rest of your day. And I will see you soon. Take care.